Smart gardening is an easy way to get a really great garden while using fewer natural resources. When you practice the techniques of smart gardening, you will conserve water and energy, save time and money, improve your garden, recycle yard waste and kitchen scraps, reduce waste going into our landfills, and help preserve the environment. The County of Los Angeles Department of Public Works established the Smart Gardening Program as an innovative and informative program to keep our environment flourishing for many years to come. Today, the Smart Gardening Program has evolved into an exceptional and easily executed series of popular and proven techniques with benefits that are achieved when we make a concerted effort to think smart and get with the program. Of the several techniques that are integral to the Smart Gardening Program, the most important is backyard composting. It's fun, it's easy, and it's a great way to do something that will make a world of difference in caring for our environment. Hi, glad you could join us. I'm Sue Nelson, and with me today is Curtis Thompson, Master Gardener, Senior Instructor with the Smart Gardening Program. He's here today to tell us everything we need to know about backyard composting. Glad you could be here, Curtis. Glad to be here, and especially in such beautiful surroundings. So tell me, what is the secret to having a lush lawn and a thriving garden like we see here today? Well, a secret in the word is composting. Being an amateur gardener, I know a little something about it, but for all our viewers out there who might not have green thumbs, tell us, what exactly is composting? To put it simply, composting is just the natural process of decomposition. It's managing color-coordinated waste materials in such a manner that you speed up decomposition. And allows you to create a 100% natural soil amendment. Using compost increases the overall organic content in the soil. It improves moisture retention, improves aeration, and increases the nutrient value for overall soil fertility. Okay, before we go any further, let's explain what you mean by color coordinated. Basically, we break the waste stream into two categories. Green materials. Okay, and by greens, you mean grass and garden trimmings, green leaves, uh, fruit and vegetable scraps. Absolutely, and then you mix those with brown materials. Okay, and by brown materials, you mean wood chips and sawdust, pine and fir needles, straw and hay. Also, things like shredded paper, coffee, coffee filters, tea bags, nut shells. And if you're concerned your compost isn't getting enough carbs, you can always add a piece of stale bread, right? Yes, those are all good compost materials. But there are a few things we should avoid, too. Things like meat, grease, bones, dairy products. Why should those things be excluded? Well, there's a number of reasons. First, they attract a number of nuisance pests, things like possums, raccoons, rats, even the neighbor's dogs. Looking for something to eat, no doubt. Exactly. They're drawn by the odors, which brings us to our second reason. As meat and bones and dairy products and grease decompose, they create unpleasant odors. So things like cheese and butter should all be excluded. Yes, these are materials that would generally create an odor that would be unpleasant to your nostrils and to your neighbors. Are there any other materials that we should avoid putting into our compost? Yes, there are. Things like glossy or treated papers, disease or infected plants, weeds and weed seeds. Oh, I bet that's so weeds don't grow in our compost and then get transferred to our lawns and gardens. Exactly. That's because if the temperature inside the compost bin doesn't get hot enough, weeds and weed seeds may survive the composting process and they may end up in your yard and garden. As if we didn't have enough weeds already. Exactly. That's why we don't put certain fruits and vegetables in the compost bin, things like tomatoes, which could sprout in the bin. Any other no-nos that we should be aware of? Well, you should try and avoid plants that have been treated with pesticides as they are bad for the organisms inside the compost bin. And you should really stay away from pet litters and pet feces, not mix those in for the same reason. Knowing that we're supposed to separate our trash into greens and browns doesn't mean we should just go ahead and dump it all together, does it? Not at all. If you were to do that, you'd end up with a rotting pile of garbage. Well, we certainly don't want that. So, what is the magic formula that we should know? Well, in order to make great compost, you should take 50% green, 50% brown, okay. mix it up, and chop it into small pieces. All right, 50-50. You don't need a calculator to figure out that mixture. More important than the 50-50 mixture is to manage the mix. Uh-oh, my management skills are a little rusty. Don't worry, Sue. You won't have to attend a management seminar. Good. In this case, Managing the mixture simply means making sure your compost is getting the proper amount of air and water. Why is that important? 
The air brings needed oxygen to air breathing bacteria and other microorganisms, allowing them to break down the materials in your bin faster and also helps prevent unpleasant odors from developing. And the water? Water is necessary for two reasons. Like all living things, microorganisms in the compost need water to sustain themselves. And second, compost materials that these microorganisms consume need to be in a water solution to help them metabolize what they eat. Sounds more like micromanaging to me. Get it? Microorganisms? Micromanaging? Oh well, but seriously, managing the mixture really isn't all that difficult, especially when you have one of these specially designed backyard composting bins that are usually available from the county for a discounted price during a workshop at one of the Smart Gardening Learning Centers located throughout L.A. County. You'll not only learn how to use your composting bin, but you'll find how to troubleshoot any problems you may encounter. For instance, what to do if your compost starts to smell. Offensive odors are usually caused by excessive moisture or high percentage of green material or when the compost is compacted down too tightly. Whatever the reason, the solution is simple. Just turn and stir your mixture until the odor dissipates. You'll know if the green material percentage is too high from the ammonia smell that comes from the compost. In this case, turn and stir the mixture and add more brown material to your compost bin. Another common problem is the mixture not composting fast enough. There could be several reasons behind this problem. One reason could be the mixture is too small. If so, simply add more materials to your bin. The microbes in your compost need water to thrive, so if it's composting too slowly and looks dry, just add more water and mix it thoroughly. What do you do if your compost isn't getting hot enough? Again, there are several possible reasons and remedies for this problem. Your compost may not be getting hot enough because it's too dry. If so, just add water and keep it moist. If it's moist enough and still not getting hot, try adding more green materials and stir it up. Some people tend to think that bugs and other creepy crawlies in their compost are a problem. They shouldn't. In fact, bugs and worms are perfectly natural and a good sign your compost is healthy and thriving. So bugs are a good thing? It depends on the type of bug, but when it comes to compost, there are a few that are quite beneficial. Earthworms are probably the most welcome inhabitants of the compost bin. Their constant tunneling aerates the compost, allowing water and nutrients and oxygen to filter down to all layers of the bin. And by ingesting decaying organic matter in the compost, their digestive system breaks it down further and passes it back into the compost as a substance known as worm castings, which is considered one of the finest and richest organic fertilizers around. When it comes to bugs, I guess we can hang a welcome sign on our compost bin. Without a doubt, these bins are the neatest and most efficient way to manage green waste and brown materials such that you end up getting good finished compost. But to tell you the truth, Sue, they're not the only way. If you're a do-it-yourselfer, you can actually build your own bins. The typical dimensions for a home-built bin are usually at least three feet by three feet by three feet. Composting is an all-natural process, and residents can't really mess it up. They can just help it happen faster and better. Okay, let's say we're ready to make our environment a little bit healthier and a little bit greener by creating our own compost. How can our viewers whip up a batch of good compost all by themselves? It couldn't be easier, Sue. All they have to do is follow five simple steps. Step one, gather up any green materials. Then collect all those brown materials that you want to throw away. For a comprehensive listing of acceptable green and brown materials, you can log on to the Smart Gardening website at www.smartgardening.com.